Ich heiße Ida Kudo und äh, wir sind auf Spot Festival in Dänemark und ihr schaut jetzt ähm, Block Rebellen. Block Rebellen. Block Rebellen. So my name is Ida Kudo. I am a half Japanese, half Danish producer, songwriter and performer in my own band with the same name. Uh, Kudo is my Japanese name and Ida is my Danish name. And I do indie pop or indie electronic music that has a strong ethnic edge. So I love to use samples such as like uh, a lot of like real organic percussion sounds, wooden sounds, rimshot sounds. I have in my band uh, one band member who plays like Indian drums and African drums and I'm just very fond of bringing in some sounds that are quite tribal or quite ethnical. Culturally, I got a lot of my uh, creative inspiration from my Japanese culture and my Japanese background through my mom because she introduced me to a lot of, um, not directly in music, but more like in, for instance, through um, stories and through uh, fairy tales and through like Miyazaki movies. All the Miyazaki uh, cartoons, I saw them when I was just a tiny little kid. And those things influenced me a lot and like my perspective in music and what I want to express. And also I think like Japanese and Danish as like I have something, the Scandinavian side has something that's quite like, I say, the Scandinavian people, they're like a little bit they're quite honest in some sort of way, you know, you want to be honest, you want to be truthful. And um, I think I have that some sort of that vibe in me when I perform. And in the same time, like in the Japanese, uh, the Japanese part is quite like, you have this contrast between things in, in the, from the Japanese culture that's like, you have something that's very disciplined and then you have something that's outrageous. You have something that is very perfectionist and then you have something that is chaotic. And that contrast, I think, came from my Japanese background. Okay. Um, which current artist or producer would you like to record a song with? Uh, producer, artist. Um, I enjoy, um, lately I enjoyed a lot, like, the latest music that Kimbra did. I like that, like, the latest production of hers. I really enjoy that. So I'd like to work with her and her producer. Also because I know she also writes and produces some of her music. And that kind of vibe, I'd like to, I'd like to work with that. Mm. What can we expect from you in 2018? Um, my video for the new single called Wolf is coming out and it's going to be premiered through a, a UK blog or a UK magazine. So it's coming up in, I don't know, like a couple of weeks. Then I'm uh, working on new material and I will have an EP coming out in September and I will have a new single coming out in July, I think. So actually my summer is pretty much like working on the new music and, and new productions and working on the EP. So that's, that's most important right now. Are there any gigs planned outside Denmark in the future? So especially in the Southern Europe or even in Germany? Yeah, um, I have this summer, I have two gigs uh, abroad or three. I have one in Expo North in Scotland coming up and I think that's in July. And then I have one in on a festival call, called uh, The Village in Holland in June. 
and then I'm gonna go from Scotland to London and I think I will have a sofa sound gig there and also a small tiny gig there because UK and London is pretty good with my music. I'd love to play in Germany. I actually have a really good vibe about Germany generally. Um, but I don't really have any gigs coming up in Germany right now. If you had an opportunity to travel in time in the time machine, so um, which year would you like to travel? So, um, the future or in the past? Uh, I think I'd like to travel back to like the 70s and I'd like to try to be in the Woodstock festival. Like the festival like that festival where Joni Mitchell was playing live. Like her great show, she had this, she has this record, uh, uh, Shadows and Light I think it's called like, and the whole concert is from, from, from um, that festival live. And that's like one of my favorite records. With she was playing with Jacob Pistorius and just like this crazy band and really like the live band when they were just like the best. I'd love to see that. What stuck? Yeah. Joni Mitchell. What role does the internet play for you as an artist? Do you use it, and if how do you use it? Well, it has become like. What role does it play? I mean, it's, it's a crucial role because you don't, you have to get around it. You have to work with it. So of course, like it, 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 it it's um, developing you. It's, it's like it's a part of your development as an artist to get around the internet in the way it works with you. Of course, you have to do the social media part, but also um, it's really important, like to get on the playlists and find out, for instance, like in which countries am I played more. Like, which countries am I streamed more in? So which countries would be relevant for me to, to find an audience with? Um, so yeah, I mean, internet is crucial. I mean, it, 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 it shapes your career because of the internet. You have to find alternative ways to make money. And especially as an upcoming artist, you have to really be creative and find your way to, to, to uh, find your own way around it. So really, I think the internet makes some things more difficult, but it also, encourages you to really find your own way around it. Okay, last question, classic. Um, vinyl or streaming? Uh, I hate to say it, but I'd say streaming, because I don't own a, re like, what do you call that? A vinyl a player. player. Yeah. And maybe I should, but I don't. Okay. But as long as, it, as long as it is great music, then it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm.